Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for you joining in tonight with our Bible study here at Abundant Life. We thank God for another day that the Lord has kept us and he has preserved us. And we thank him and we give him thanks to his holy and righteous name. We want to say a word of prayer tonight before we begin. Eternal God, our Father, we just want to thank you for another day that you've allowed us to see and to come to the close. We thank you, O oh God, for keeping us, protecting us from hurt, harm, danger, even from the virus. We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. We pray tonight, Lord, that you will look upon all of the bereaved families tonight. Look upon the Wright family. Look upon the Coates family. Look upon the Stone family. Father, we just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will comfort in this hour. For we know, Lord God, that you are a God that is conscious of our comfort. You told the disciples, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you another comforter. Father, we thank you tonight for being cognizant of where we are and what we're going through. There is not one sparrow that falls to the ground that you don't know anything about. The number of hairs on our head are numbered and you know which one is number one and you know the last one to be named. Father, we ask you tonight just to bless us as only you can and we shall be careful to give you the praise, the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God, we would like to take a moment tonight. We are going to be... Uh, studying out of the book of Revelation, chapter number three, two. And we thank God, amen, tonight for this. And also 1 Corinthians 13, we will be looking at. But I, I want to take a moment to recognize um, Pastor Coates. Elder Alfonso Coates, uh, a great young man whom the Lord has called home. And as Jesus told the women that cried for him as he went up Calvary's mountains, he said, don't cry for me, but cry for those who remain. And we know that Jesus knows what he's talking about. Our, our hearts and prayers and thoughts go out to the Coates family tonight. I want you to know that we love you and that we're praying for you, for your strength in the Lord. Also, for the Stone family, we want you to know that we thank God for the service of Pastor Stone and his dedication. He, he labored, amen, and we thank God, amen. Uh, for him, the Lord called him home, and uh, we want to be in prayer for the Stone family. Also, Apostle Maurice Wright, we want to be in prayer for the Wright family as well. Uh, Apostle Wright was, was with us not long ago and ministered a very powerful word right here at Abundant Life, and uh, we thank God. Our, our, our thoughts, our prayers, our condolences go out to these bereaved families and, and all the others that, that uh, we may not even know of, but uh, it's praying time, and so we thank God, amen, for them. And I just wanted to acknowledge them tonight and let the families know that we're praying for them, and uh, we know that God is going to see them through, amen. Tonight, we want to look at the word of the Lord. Uh, here in the book of Revelation, and they have it on the screen so that we can follow. 
But John is on the Isle of Patmos and he writes and he says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his hand and who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy work and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Verse 3, and hath uh, borne and hath patient and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, repent and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Tonight we want to talk about love. We're, we're in a place where our lives have been changed. Overnight, our lives have been changed. Can't go to a restaurant. We cannot gather at our churches. Our lives have been changed dramatically. And many times when we look, God is a God of love, of mercy, and he's a God of grace. But when we look a few weeks ago when all of the attention was placed upon the, this coronavirus, but before that, months and months, we watched the news and there was unrest all over the world. People in the streets rioting throwing objects at officers, officers with shields. And it wasn't just in one country, but it seemed like the world was in a turmoil, which brings us to another scripture that quotes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, everybody must understand when Paul spoke and wrote in the book of Romans where he says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means if all have sinned, that means that all over the world, men needed to repent and be born again. But here we see, even in the great country that we live in, we see that this plague has hit us, and I think that it is very naive for whatever side of the street you stand on to believe that it's this one's fault or that one's fault. We have to come to the place that there's just not enough love. And this country was built on Christendom, and Christendom's foundation is love. And many times people can love just like every other facet of life and then drift away from the thing that actually gives them their anchorage. Tonight I want to appeal to everyone concerning love. Jesus says, by this will men know that you are my disciples that ye love one another. That's a very powerful statement that he makes. But we must take into account what he's saying. Sometimes we feel that our struggle is loving folk who are far off or at a distance. But many times we struggle loving the people that are in our own circle. 
that believe and have the same faith that we do. He says, by this will men know that you are my disciples indeed, that you have love one for another. In America, there are shootings and there are killings and violence. Uh, richest country in the world. One of the richest countries in the world and, and uh, sometimes the behavior is like a third world country. It's because many times we're getting away from God. And I want to talk to you tonight concerning love. Because I promise you, if you recall when Peter was walking on the water, when he first in the boat, Jesus was walking the water and Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me come. And, and Jesus said, well, come because it's me. And the Bible says Peter steps out and he starts to walk on water. But he gets distracted by the boisterous winds. He takes his eyes off Jesus by looking at all of the other things that are going on that distract, causes the distraction, and then he begins to sink. Many times as Christians, we have a love for God, but we get distracted by all the things that are around us. And this is why uh, uh, the, the scripture teaches us that we are to meditate in the word day and night, that we do not forget and that we do not drift away from the principles and the Word of God. So, here the church have left their first love. Left their first love. Notice this, left their first love. How do you leave something that's working for you? How do you leave something that has given you life? How do you leave something that you are a beneficial of? How do you leave it? Amen. If it wasn't for love, God loving us, we wouldn't even be saved. So how is it that we can leave our first love? And many times the Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want to show you something we want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tonight and uh, verse 1. And I want you to listen to the Apostle Paul as he talk about this thing called love. Now, what we have to understand is in chapter 12, uh, the latter part of it, as he begins to talk about the body and how God gave gifts and uh, gave gifts unto men uh, first, he gave apostles. Second, he gave, uh, it was prophets. And then thirdly, he gave teachers. And then after that, it was miracles and healings, and uh, as it states. And, and Paul says in chapter 12, he says, I want to show you a more excellent way. Because what we have to understand about the Corinthian church, they was the most gifted church, but they were the most confused church. And so the apostle Paul wanted to write to them to educate them because so many times we can have things and, and, and operate in things that uh, is absent of knowledge. Amen. Notice, I believe uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 10, he says concerning Israel, he said, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. Now, when we look at here in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, notice Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Notice here, he begins to talk because what was happening was the Corinthian church, just like the average Christian, puts more weight on the gift than they do on love. In other words, they feel that they are all that because of the gift. But you're not all that because of the gift. You're all that when you love. 
This is why he's saying, though I speak with the tongues of angels or the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. And notice the choice of words that's used here, charity, uh, meaning generosity, meaning giving to people that are uh, not as fortunate sometimes as you. I don't know uh, about you, but many times the folk that we have the greatest problem of forgiving are those who deserve punishment, those who have done us wrong. But notice he says it's, it's charity. Now, we're, we're not talking about boyfriend and girlfriend. We're not talking about husband and wife. We're not talking about mom and, and, and daughter or father and son. We're talking about this love called charity because for me to love my father, I love him because he's my father. For me to love my wife, I love her because she's my wife and I'm attracted to her and so on. But, but charity, you're not getting anything back. You're giving. You're giving and not receiving. Amen. In other words, it ain't doing anything for you. It's doing something for them. It's not doing anything for you. So he said, though I speak with the tongues of angels and the tongues of, of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. In other words, I'm just a noisemaker. I'm just a noisemaker. That's all I am. But many times here the Corinthian church was putting more weight on the gift than they was on the love. Next verse. He says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. All of these gifts, the prophecy, the understanding of, my, uh, of my, mysteries and, uh, and, 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 and having all knowledge, all of these things, the Corinthian church felt that this was where their value was. So Paul had to teach them, no, this is not where the value is. Because you can actually operate in these gifts in a backslidden condition. Hmm. Praise God. Remember when Jesus said, many will come in that day and said, Lord, did I prophesy in your name? Did I cast out devils in your name? Did, did I do miracles in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Well, you had to know me because I wouldn't have had success if you didn't know me. He says, no, 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 I never knew you. Just like I never knew Pharaoh's mu uh, 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 magicians. They were able to turn rods into snakes just like Moses and Aaron. But they weren't operating under the power of God. Next verse. It says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Without love, Everything we do is for a show. Without love, everything we do is to uh, excite or impress other people. Notice this. So he says, if I do these things which would look like they would be uh, commendable, because I've given my body to be burned, I've fed the poor. But if I have not charity, if I have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Next verse. It says, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity voneth not itself. Charity is not puffed up. Look at that. Charity suffers long. In other words, I'll forgive you 70 times 7. Charity is kind. Even though you were ugly to me, I was kind to you. Charity envieth not. Hallelujah. Charity voneth not itself, is not puffed up. If we have any symptoms like <laughs> impatience, 
uh, hostile, uh, jealous of everybody who God's blessing. If we are a bragger and a boaster, uh, if we have an attitude that we're better and superior to other folk, if you got any of these symptoms, you need to check because love is absent. Charity suffereth alone, is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity boneth not itself, is not puffed up. Next verse. Charity doeth not behave itself unseemly. Charity seeketh not her own. Charity is not easily provoked. Charity thinketh no evil. Wow. Charity thinketh no evil. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Charity thinketh no evil. Wow. So this is how we can tell whether we have charity or not. Not that we prophesy, but how do we behave? Uh, what do we seek? Are we quick to get angry? Are we always plotting something evil against others? Next verse. Charity rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Wow. These are the characteristics of charity. Next verse. Charity beareth all things, it believeth all things, it hopeth all things, endureth all things. Wow. Charity. Next verse. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies that you've hung your hats on, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Notice all of the things that you're boasting and you're claiming legitimacy upon, you're, you're claiming to be, uh, to make us great, they fail. But charity never fails. Prophecy, whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. All of the things that you, you have hung your hats on, Corinthian church, you got your hat on the wrong rack. Next verse. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Next verse. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. That's why he was saying it's going to cease because when that which is perfect is come, then uh, the prophecies and the tongues and all this will cease. The knowledge, all of this will vanish when that which is perfect is come. But the word perfect there means maturity. That's what it means. It means maturity. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. What's in part? Well, we prophesy in part. We know everything we're doing is in part. But when maturity hits, then these things will be done away. Next verse. Watch this. Watch this. Now he explains what he just got through dealing with about maturity and immaturity, about love and about uh, 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 gifts. Notice he said it's like this. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I love his writing here because when we go back to first, the first verse, notice he said, though I speak with the tongues of men 
and of angels and have not charity. I'm nothing. Now he comes in verse 11 and says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I speak as a child. I understood when he talked about understanding all mysteries. He's, he's, he's commanding this right here in verse 11, what he was talking about in verse 1. Notice that. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. In other words, I understood in part. I didn't know it all. I wasn't grown. I didn't, I didn't know it all. I didn't have it all. Huh? So when I was a child, I spake as a child. In other words, uh, uh, with the tongues of angels and the tongues of men, that's, that's childish. I understood as a child, talking about the mysteries. I thought as a child. Wow. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's something how people can be proud of being a child. Glory be to God. What we need to be proud of, we need to be proud of being a man. And what's a man? Is a mature one. And a mature one is one who loves. Next verse, watch this. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Next verse. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. If you'll notice the average Christian, the things that's most significant is neglected. And the thing that is least important is the thing that is most celebrated and the thing that we're most proud of. This is why the apostles had to take and write to us concerning these things. When people say, oh, so-and-so's got a gift. You know, this one has got a gift. And there's nothing wrong with the gifts because what the gifts were given for, the gifts were given to edify the body of Christ, was to build the body of Christ. In other words, the gifts were given uh, so that we could advance. I believe Ephesians 4 uh, talks about that. And he gave some apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, teachers uh, for the perfecting, perfecting of the saints. In other words, the maturity of the saints. And here we are today, uh, many times we're acting like children when we don't love. When we're quick to get angry, that's, that's like a child to pout, to boycott. Amen? And this is why Paul is saying, listen, y'all got your focus on the wrong thing. Your focus should be on love. America, America. You need to be, we need to be focused on love. There is so much division. The Bible says if a house be divided against itself, it cannot stand. If Satan's kingdom is, is divided, he can't stand. And notice, it's like Democrats and Republicans are at each other's throat. Everybody trying to throw a punch, and yet we're in the same country. House divided cannot stand. Amen. And many times we want to talk about God. We want to uh, say we love God, but yet we don't love one another. And let me, can I say one more thing? One of the greatest misunderstandings that could ever have been, we got people who believe that abortion is the only sin. Well, I got news for you. It's wrong. I don't agree with it, but it's not the only sin. People feel because they are for abortions or against abortions that they're saved. That doesn't make you saved. That doesn't make you saved. It's the same thing that our lesson is talking about tonight. You can speak with the tongues of angels and the tongues of men and have not charity. You're just a tingling cymbal, a sounding brass. We have to understand that 
There is not just one thing that will send us to hell. If husbands are not loving their wives, it's wrong. If wives are not being submissive to their husband, it's wrong. If children are not obeying their parents, it's wrong. If we're not obeying the laws of the land, we're wrong. So when we look at it here, it's more to it than a convenient stand as a Christian. And I'm going to tell you one of the greatest challenges of a Christian's life is to love. Is to pray for those who despitefully use you. To love those you disagree with. To be patient, as the book just talk, taught us. Charity is long-suffering. Charity is patient. Charity is kind. It's generous. It loves. And I tell you, it never fails. God bless you tonight. I want to pray with you. We thank God for you joining us tonight. Remember, let's get back as the lord said to john tell the church you've left your first love repent and get back to love it repent do your first work your first work is love father i thank you tonight that you've allowed us your grace and your mercy even in the scripture, we see that you didn't simultaneously remove the candlestick when the candlestick got wrong, when the church got wrong. You gave them space to repent. Tonight, you're giving America space to repent. The Lord is not happy with injustice. The Lord is not happy when we have respect of person. The Lord is not happy when we exalt ourselves above one another. The Lord is not happy. He's not pleased when we walk in pride. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I thank you, O oh God, tonight for giving us a space to repent. And Father, I pray that you will touch every hearer tonight that's listening to my voice. Help us be what you'd have us to be. And Father, those that are not saved, I pray right now, Lord, that you will deal with their heart, with their mind. And I ask you tonight, Lord, to, for those that have backslidden, those that need to rededicate their lives unto you, I ask that you give them space. I ask that you give them time. I ask that you deal with them, those that are on drugs and alcohol. We rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that Jesus is Lord. And he's able to save. Though your sins be as scarlet, he will wash them whiter than snow. Father, right now, help them to know that if they seek you, they will find you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight. We thank God for you. I'm asking you to sow with us. Amen. Uh, give a gift. Give a gift to the church. Uh, our cash app is dollar sign, Abundant Life 323. Amen. Cash app is dollar sign, Abundant Life 3. 23. They'll have it on the screen for you. We'd love to hear from you. We know that this is going to be over here soon and we're praying for our country. We're praying for our president. We're praying for all the governors, all the mayors. We're just praying that the Lord will unite us like never before and that we will all walk in love. I'm saying to you, give tonight. Share with us. Be a partner. If you're partaking, be a partner. Amen. If you're partaking, be a partner. So, amen. We have our cash app. We have text to tithe. Both of these will be on your screen tonight. You will see this. And if you would, take out time to sow. Whatever it is, whatever it is, sow. Be a sower. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless you.